Right from the get-go, Ubisoft reminds us that the setting for this game is not Cuba. But what I love about this setting is the frozen in time bit. Because of that fact, we get to use weapons of the past, such as the PPSH, MP40, and RPD. My true yarns. Giancarlo Esposito could spit my mouth and I would thank him. That's my rather crude way of saying that I love this man. He was born to play captivating, nuanced villains, and his performance as Anton Castillo does not disappoint. Far Cry's always been about the villains, and Ubisoft recognizes this. And when you really think about it, Giancarlo puts this game on his back and sold it. Every bit of marketing, the trailers, the faux interviews was all of Giancarlo's Anton. Talk about having star power. The most effective treatment for cancer the world has ever seen. Grown within our precious tobacco, modified with the purest fertilizer, Viviro, is the key to rebuild paradise. Oh, I get it, I get it! He bad dictator because he plays lies for the media. Seriously though, it's some solid juxtaposition with what he's saying and what's on screen. And so, with renewed focus, I must extend the draft to paradise. It's really interesting that Castillo uses the word draft, as here in the US, we have a draft of our own. It's horrible what is happening in Yara. But it's a very skillful use of language that Castillo uses. We hear him drafting anyone into working to provide a beautiful future for Yara. And it's an easier pill to swallow because it's something that we are accustomed to. Both waiting. Drinks in Mexico. Dinner in Miami. I swear that Ubisoft created Far Cry 6 with female Danny in mind. I've played both, and there's just a certain X factor about the writing and the super relatable performance of Nisa Gunduz that makes her stand out much more than Sean Ray's Danny. Not to discredit his performance, of course, but I just love female Danny. Marco! Always making new friends. This is the first time in a long time that Ubisoft went out of their way to create a complete protagonist that has understandable motivations and a personality that's more than one dimensional. Far Cry 5 didn't even have the character speak. Having Danny being this fleshed out makes her interactions, when they happen, with Castillo, ten times better. It's why we love Jason, because he was falling down the same rabbit hole as Voss and got to talk with Voss about it all the time. And then and then and then, Far Cry 6 uses third-person cutscenes, I believe for the first time in the franchise. This does a lot of the heavy lifting, as we get to see our player character. What ticks her, what makes her smile, her pain. It helps us connect to her so much more. I find it funny that Far Cry is a franchise built on the backs of the villains, they casted the crazy good Giancarlo, and then moved him to second place to make room for the first shot at creating a three-dimensional protagonist. And that's not me complaining, because I freaking love Danny, as you'll realize throughout this video. He gave up his ticket. For his family. Check that out. Without even knowing it, Denny has been helping Diego escape, survive, and protect them. And in typical Far Cry fashion, we come face to face with our villain right from the start. It's about the challenge. Except when he caught a big, fat, juicy marlin. <laughs> he was too proud. God damn, Giancarlo was a master at his craft. Able to weave in that laugh and not have Castillo be any less intimidating. If anything, it makes him more human which in turn makes him more scary. Boys and Yara, you are fighting your soul! Some great direction here. Simple, but effective. Castillo doesn't move at the approach or flinch at the gunshot. Stone wall. They can work. Make vivido. Truth or lies. Truth or lies is my favorite game that Castillo likes to play. He could paint the pretty picture if Diego wants, but what's the point if Castillo is willing to tell the hard truth? I believe it's a subtle manipulation to make the horrors he speaks more digestible since you're the one that elected to hear it. And it just sounds cool. Truth or lies. It might just be me, but if Far Cry was to have a symbol representing it, it'd be a machete. So it stands to reason that Danny donning it would be our segue into our Far Cry title card. I'm Danny. If you notice from the opening, Danny has had this blue stripe behind her ear. She's always been Libertà. She just couldn't see it yet. I see Far Cry 6 went to the Borderlands school of introducing their characters. Lita also said you weren't a pussy. Come mierda. Ah! <laughs> Proving a point. They just had to name the mission Juan of a Gun. Juan is my mentor. He's also unstable and an alcoholic. Sounds like my kind of people. Today we drink in the worst f cantina in Yara. Or is it Colombia? Or is it Cuba? What you think gave it away, Wapo? Don't you mean Loki? <laughs> Proving us the old man still got it, drawing quicker and using the book as a silencer. Hey! Guapo is in love with you. It may be a human leg, but this is Guapo's way of showing you love. The horse is out of the barn, and now the cocaine is all over the kids, Danny. That's one way to say the cat's out of the bag. Why is he following me? Guapo goes with those who need him most. Guapo is just an alligator Jack Sparrow compass. Like those therapy dogs in your precious America. Hey, don't disrespect Chorizo like that. Damn. 
Making shit is addictive. It can be. Is Ubisoft planting the seed to get us psychologically hooked with playing the game to unlock and craft everything that exists? Or am I just thinking about it too hard? <laughs> Bringing Far Cry back to basics. Fun music and burning drugs. And the song that's playing is Bella Ciao, which was originally an anti-slavery song made by rice paddy workers in Italy. It then morphed to be anti-fascist around the rise of the Nazis, and it basically became the anthem for anti-fascists. What am I, a history channel? God. Hmm. Burning shit with a flamethrower. <laughs> Felt familiar. Ubisoft knew what they were doing. You're building bridges for me, Danny. It's your gift. More than you know, as it's kind of the only thing we do for the entire game. Mm -hmm. And now Danny's helming Bella Chow. It's now my headcanon that the song is actually playing out of some radio they brought with them. Remember, rule number nine, right tool for the right job. Rule number 10, shut the f up. I need Danny to write more rules. I'm sad that I couldn't find this track in the OST, but I felt like a superhero running around fighting on this ship with that score blasting me used. Easily my favorite track of the whole OST. Maybe Content ID will help me find it. And if a dog refuses to break like Julio here, like Clara Garcia, like Libertad. Jesus Christ, Giancarlo is so menacing. Listen to some interviews of what he actually sounds like. He's a happy, bubbly man. And then he could do this. It's amazing. But when you achieve our vision, I promise you, <laughs> there will be no more steps. If there's anything we learn about playing Are You a Dictator in Far Cry 4, it's that many dictators run off the ideal of the ends justifying the means. Fine. <sighs> then, enjoy the show. I mean, it's not the worst way to parent, no? Be there to support your child through something difficult, but don't chastise them if they fail. But remember not to be so soft to not show them what repercussions that can ensue. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is terribly manipulative and nothing you should put your child through. I keep my promises, Danny. Keeping a promise. And I didn't put in the secret ending because we all know about them now. If you want to know my opinions on Far Cry's secret endings, I talk about that in my Far Cry 4 video. Welcome to Libertad, Danny. I can leave any time. What's the rush? <laughs> Cute excuses. We know it's in Danny's blood to be Libertad. We take Esperanza, we free Yara. So there's a lot of people that feel a Far Cry 6 map is just big for big sake. First, it's Ubisoft, so what did you expect? And second, narrative director Navid Kavari said that they wanted to try creating an entire country from border to border. They had to shrink it to an island size, but viewing Yara from that lens, I appreciate the vision so much more. It's ambitious to try and create a living, breathing landmass of this size in just four years, with Yubi of all companies breathing down your neck. To do that, I need you to recruit three groups in Yara to fight with Libertad. Each is waging war across Yara with a different piece of Castillo's empire. Far Cry 6 takes the three regions formula of Far Cry 5 and proves to us that Ubisoft knows how to do it right. This is the perfect formula to experience what Far Cry has to offer, if you don't craft each section as if it's a color by numbers book. Each location has a full cast of memorable characters and moments, with missions that actually matter and have a stake in the story and plot, not just missions that can be done in any order and all serve the goal of filling a meter to trigger the actual story missions. I send a squad to these groups, I'm an invader. I send a scout, then I'm not serious. With you, they get my best career without politics and bullshit. Goldilocks, right? Libertad takes the capital, we slit Anton's throat, maybe drink his blood, etc, etc. Look at that cheeky little smile Danny brandishes. The accent. Clara hides it best she can, but she was born rich. From a family of true Yaren she left behind. But she can't hide the stink of the upper class. What's that have to do with me? I understand Juan's position, but doesn't it speak volumes of Clara's decision that she'd forgo all that to come lead down in the trenches with the Yarens? Can we just toss on some wins to the Red Soul Vare weapons in Far Cry 6? I've only played mainline entries, but from my experience, Far Cry 6 is having the most fun with its arsenal between Supremos and Red Vares. And I apologize in advance if I awkwardly roll my R's or say something strange with my super white American accent. It just kind of happens. I don't know what to tell you. And check this out. First foray into cinematography, and they have some fun with it every now and then. The camera is a beautiful language of its own, and I'll always appreciate seeing the smallest things such as this. You just saved Maximus Matanzas, the most blessed motherfucking group in Yara. Well, I would have done it myself personally, but you know, I couldn't stop crying. <laughs> Why is that me? You want to die before we get to America? And look at that. See how fast he disarms and neutralizes that pistol? Paolo's definitely ex-military too. 
We were Libertad before Libertad. Who do you think dragged Clara to her first protest when she wanted to live in a f***ing library? I don't care. And that's why I loved it. Not worried about what was and just wanting to change what is. Don't worry, Talia's full of shit, and so are you. Welcome to Camp Maximus. How welcoming. And I know if I shoot you, Paolo's death disappears. See, that's what I'm talking about. Danny! Danny, Danny, Danny! I love Bicho. Every time he's on screen, he just brings me joy. Now. Your safety's on. Ha! But I painted the loco everywhere. No, I painted them. And stole a f***ing zebra and killed for that local priest. No bullshit. You're doing the show. And this is why I love Danny again. Put these missions into Far Cry 5, then Bicho would have said that without a hitch. But Danny is fighting for the Berta and doesn't put up with no bullshit. See how cute our man Bicho is? Talia's got bars and check out the camera. The instant she starts singing, everything gets turned on its head. Damn right, f you, Castillo. This isn't my war. When this is over, I'm still gonna have to fight to live here. It's like you forget that I'm trans in f yada. I think storytelling as a whole is maturing really well. Not using a character's sex, race, or gender identity as the linchpin that makes them interesting and entirely focus on that. Each of those are just one thing that makes us us. And I appreciate focusing the whole rather than pandering and shoving wokeness down our throats for the sake of it. But with that said, representation of any kind is almost universally a good thing. A real man doesn't run. Holy f <laughs> Having Talia say something like that really shows how much she cares for Yar and Liberta because be that's not an okay thing to say. You spend a lot of time with your father. He, he is a great teacher. And your mother? ¿Qué clase de tontería es esto, María? Es el estilo americano. We don't know this till later, but Anton rejects the question because he knows if he answers, he loses so much credibility because Maria is Diego's mother. He, he is a great teacher. And your mother? ¿Qué clase de tontería es esto, María? Es el estilo americano. Let's talk Viviro. And oh sh! She understood them like a good journalist and moved on. Is Viviro produced with slave labor? Truth or lies? The truth, of course. Yara did not write the playbook. Slavery was your first corporation, 1800 to 1860. Cotton was your number one export. Grown by whom? Just a second. Slaves. Four million Americans worth $3.5 billion. The number one asset in your economy was people who look like me. What is that called? A history lesson? A head start. Truth or lies comes back, and with the ambiguity of that statement concerning Castillo and Yara, he could have said that response to either, and it would have lined up. It's not right, but Castillo's team to understand exactly how to play the American media. Inmates' pennies. America is not alone. Correct! Children so are close. Sweatshops build our phones, and Bibiro saves millions of lives. Do you think that those lives care where it comes from? I was not expecting Castillo to drop the mic like that. Far Cry villains have always been created to be understood, and to a certain degree, be... Right? And it's scary that this video game dictator coming from Ubisoft might have a point. At least a little bit. You were imprisoned at the age of 13, the same age as Diego. Now that is some brilliant writing. From the journalism perspective, she is just talking strictly about age, but for us, the subtext is telling us that Diego is in prison at this very moment, just like his father was many years ago. It's speaking to the horror Anton is putting onto his son, but also sheds light on why Anton is the man he turned into. Pruning tobacco. I hear you still have the blade. When Yara becomes paradise, when I give my Vibiro to America, my methods, your questions, no one will care. We're done here? Take a look at that. Anton is threatened and feels the need to stand up to try and dominate the reporter. And she just stands her ground and looks him dead in the eye. For your father. And that's how Anton has kept the media quiet for so long about what's really going on. Cherry picking the reporters he lets in so he can give them a Vero. Why is it every time I see statues taken down of a dictator, I think Handsome Jack is an opportunity? Fucking get your liver ready. We're gonna put that little guy through the ringer. Every Friday night. Am <laughs> I sharing too much about my drinking habits? There's nothing more Far Cry than murdering bad guys just to get some booze. Coño. Leave it to Far Cry to dedicate a whole mission to getting plastered and calling it a bottle episode. 
And I mean, hey, people were complaining about every mission being go here, kill bad guys, press E on something. So here you go. I love that the quest descriptions are written from Danny's view. Bicho, where are you, you little pineapple hair f I'm gonna spray every billboard in Yara. Okay, that's every single one. She works fast. How many did you do? Like, uh, at least a hundred. Nice. Drink? Danny is my kind of drinking partner. You know, before Liberta, I had two best friends. Just like you. Uh, I know she's probably talking about Talia and Paolo, but I'm taking it as her calling Bicho a best friend. Lita used to joke we were nothing but numbers to the rest of Yara. When Lita died, she called me the lucky one. Like an idiot, I thought. Still just a number, Danny. A nobody. I am not a number. I am not a f gun. I'm a guerrilla. Just like you. Danny says later that she's not great at the whole speech thing, but look at this. She's inadvertently inspiring the hell out of Bicho. And I'm tempted to add a this is why I love Danny, but I'll spare you. But I'll say Yubi has it in the right greatness. It's in a shame when publication dates and greed gets in the way. When it comes to Far Cry 6, though, I'm loving having the developed protagonist. The silent type just doesn't really fit Far Cry. I use this, and you use that. Foe, I love Danny counter going up. The more I pay attention, the more the cinematography jumps out at me. Bicho has a deep-rooted issue of feeling purposeful. Taking the camera out wide to make him feel small with addressing Danny as he contemplates? Mwah. The more I analyze this game, the more I love how much narratively it actually pushes Far Cry forwards. But I could be a cool f***ing gun too. <laughs> That's not the most perfect use of Bathos I've seen in recent times. It subverts what he's truly going through, but it's completely in line with his character conflict to say something like this. It also perfectly sets up what he's about to do next. Maximus Matanzas is too far gone. Don't give up on them yet, Clara. You're called Danny. This is why Danny takes over in the end. She's not willing to give up. And the most important part of this interaction is that Clara actually defers to Danny's ruling. Coming up to Maria's TV station. Anything you can tell me? Press passes. I won't ask. Even in more time, you gotta keep a sense of humor, no? Our stuff so we don't get shot. Let's change these clothes. <laughs> Bicho is there for Libertad, but not a front lineman. Wait. Aren't you? Silvia Balboa Garden City. Urban Garden. Can we move this along? Maria's waiting. Quick on the draw, these two. Often, if you're just decisive and confident, you can move through like this. And, I mean, a good disguise helps, too. The Castillo administration's pride and joy. Hey, look, the reporter from earlier is here. Spasibo for the inside tour. You really make the reporter feel special. Castillo is a master at how he manipulates the media. I hate to win it, but... Someone's got a game like that, it's hard to deny it. He found a compound that actually slows cancer cell division, practically to a halt. I love the angle they attempted to tackle to make the player feel gray about their actions. Its premise is effective. Who is right? Where do we draw the line on when the ends justify the means? As much as I'd prefer a game to be more gray in its two sides, I still appreciate the idea at heart here, and think it's a great base to build a narrative upon. I expand upon my opinions of this, but at that point, we'd be reaching podcast-style content. That's something that a lot of you would be interested in. Let me know down below, because I could talk about this thing for hours. There are rumors that farmers exposed to PG-240 are actually developing cancer from it. Rumors spread by fools and belief by idiots. It's not true. Uh -huh. Illusory comebacks exist, and I love this reporter for trying to dig at the truth. F I can't find this character's name anywhere. Happen. Get her the f out of here! Revolution is not cut and clean. It can be dirty sometimes. Maybe I'm misinterpreting the gravitas of Maria's death, but to me, at the end of the day, it felt unnecessary and an upsetting scar tainting the Brita, which helps fuel the realism Ubisoft is going for in this revolution. This is the scene I've heard many point to Castillo being one-dimensional and a mustache twirling bad guy. I'll admit, in my Far Cry 4 video, I subscribed to that idea as well, until I took the time to look deeper. This man is cold because of his upbringing, not because Yubi wanted him to be the bad guy. All Castillo is, is a reflection of his father. Diego is trying his hardest to break the cycle. Most often, when you boil it down, we're all just products of our childhood, and Castillo displays this in stride. <laughs> Your mother is dead. That's a f bomb. Exaggerated by the reporter's question earlier. 
Castillo's upbringing, he is a man raised pragmatically to not feel emotion, and this is bleeding over to how he raised his son. He's cold because he believes he has to be. has to be strong for his son, his nation, and himself, as his ego demands him to be stalwart. Your mother is dead. It's Giancarlo mostly, but also the animators that make sure his performance is maintained and keeps that beautiful nuance that only reaches Giancarlo's eyes in this scene. For me, it's read that he truly cared for Maria, and because of his upbringing, this is how he copes. As much as I'm annoyed that we mostly only get Anton independent of Danny most of the time, he's clearly a treat that Ubisoft labored over for four years. He put something in me! Oh god, he put something in me! Guess what I'm gonna say? This is why I love Danny. She is dying by poison and still tells the pair to flee and forget about her. You don't give a f about Libertad or Castillo. You just like shooting guns. Lita? No, this isn't real. And finally, we have it. A trademarked Far Cry drug trip experience. No, Danny. They were coming for you. I should have been with Clara, but I came to the city to say goodbye to you. How was I supposed to know? It's cheap, but it doesn't change how effective it is on relaying Danny's internal conflict about everything. Listen to me, Danny. Drop the knife. <laughs> Danny. Danny's a hard motherfucker. Dare I say, this is why I love Danny. No, you're no killer. Look at you shaking. You're a frightened little rat. A pest. A parasite. Yes. You take and give nothing back. He's a garbage human. Pero tengo que ganarle las pelotas a Bembe. You're a piece of shit. At least I don't lie to my friends. This reaction from Danny gets me really interested. Bebe said, tough little kid. Danny seems to be second-guessing, inspiring Bicho for acting so abrasively when this is her 9 to 5. It's a point of contention because we have to weigh the likely positive side of Bembe's death versus what it'd do to Bicho to kill him. There's always going to be a Bembe, Paolo. But there aren't many Bichos out there. When Bicho gets back, maybe tell him how you feel, yeah? He could use it right now. Are we a bunch of Bichos? Forgive me, but... I'd say yes, and that's not a bad thing. Nobody told me this was a party. Check this out. Clara and Juan have made a point to come look after their new possible Libertad squad. Some may call it saving face with Clara, but I call it caring about her people. Weren't you running to America? Found your cojones a little late. Brilliant. I love that Paolo is always shown to be strong and capable, even against someone like Juan. Where the fuck is El Doctor? The Vivero Processing Center Building 13. Oh, damn, Paolo's not f***ing around. He's got his information, and he is done. I'm all out of mercy. And significant trauma to this skull. I'm speechless, but Matias is a win. Oh, what is that? Is this a second drug-induced Far Cry moment I'm winning? Oof. Bicho. Si, Capitan. Queen Clara. I mean, Heffa. Bicho's win. They simply want chaos. They... They... And now the curtain is taken off Anton. We get to see his illness covered up and his speech is in a preliminary phase. These things can be first read as his rule isn't as strong as we expected, but I like to view it as a man whose position is flawed, tainted, and heartbreaking. Showing the humanity of Castillo was a number one goal for Far Cry 6, and sure, it's all absent from the PC, but it doesn't detract from the honest-to-goodness writing the case. When I am dead and Yara is burning, what exactly is your plan? Hold hands... Sing songs around the fire. Binga! Who told you, fascista? You call me Senor Presidente! <laughs> F***ing wonderful. A beautiful showcase of Anton's composure cracking under the growing arm of Libertad. Start, Start the camera. I'm ready to speak to my people. And Anton's ego can't stand being attacked, so he feels he needs to posture in front of all of y'all. Truly showing how weak of a man he is at heart. <laughs> what a Danny! If anyone is deserving of the Borderlands intro, it's El Tigre. What the hell? You're trapped. Death is staring you in the face. What do you do? <laughs> I've been kicked in the cojones a thousand times. I haven't felt them since 72. My baby Tigre. Keeping appearances till the audience is gone. Who are you? We're La Moral, and the Leste is our land. Our land. Our medicine. You practice that little speech? Yeah. Candor. Yeah. She's gonna kick my ass if I don't come back with something. 
Well, Clara's gonna try to kick mine if I don't bring these to the legends. Clara's gonna try. Danny don't take no shit. Welcome to La Moral. Libertad. Whatever. El Tigre. Feast of the Revolution. Humility. I took pictures of that place Honron was talking about. You swipe to the left. Helping the old guy. We wish to stay at the inn. Our business is our own. We should be out there drinking and fucking and skipping school. La Moral are my kind of people. Also, Yonron is a blessing. Admiral Benitez walked into my classroom with a gun. She called on your name, you came to the front. Alvarez. Bermudez. Carrillo. Jimenez. Peña. Now that's a damn effective way to rally your people. Wise words, young guerrilla. La Moral taking new members? I don't know why El Tigre's entrance here made me laugh so hard. If you take me. Welcome to the war, viejo. <laughs> Perfect the melding of two generations with this handshake. Yeah. The criminals of La Libertad will be stopped. Yeah. There are few, we are many. You hear that? Libertards? Jesus, McKay just did a speed run on how fast can you make an audience hate you. Now, before every mission, I find that if I imagine myself accomplishing it, I will accomplish it. I swear to God, that manifesting actually works. Goodbye! Just want to screenshot that moment real quick. We couldn't have this conversation before! Before battle, I am speechless. But when I'm in Carlito and bullets are dinging, that's when I have my moments of clarity. He's been through all this once before. Lorenzo is cool as a cucumber. You good, Lorenzo? I'm good. So is Carlito. It's like reconnecting with a long lost lover. That's a little crow! <laughs> I love a little banter in the heat of battle. You know, this is superhero last moment charge was cool and all, but I'm more impressed that she rolled with the Supremo on her bag without being in pain. You or me? That's fun. That's not a smart move. You should cut her down. You are not Fieri. Do not become him. There's something about third world prisons. They make me hard. So there I am. Barbecue sauce on my titties. I mean, just casually reviewing footage and writing the script. And then McKay says that, and I out loud went, what the f***? Guapo's the homie for not holding this against me. I still appreciate missions like this. No stakes, no shooty shooty, just hanging out with the characters and celebrating. It's nice. Check out the top left. I got it. Yelena, Honron, Lorenzo, me, and all of La Morale will go after Castillo. Danny, you kill McKay. That doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense. Her one woman army. So I was getting tired of talking. <laughs> Check out El Tigre. Too old to be bothered. We fight! Yes! Here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> Here for a good time, not for a long time, but in a minor key. More will die and nobody is safe. Not an old legend. Or a new one. I'm straight up crying in the club right now. You kids look like you could use a little luck. <laughs> the theme of luck surrounding Danny is so interesting. I've been racking my brain trying to think exactly what it means. What is your interpretation of this? Every modern country in the history of the world has dark days. Only difference now is that everybody can film it and stream it and try to get the world pissed off about it. Even in my country, Canada. Go look up what they did to the indigenous folks and the fracking Jesus Murphy. But hey, nobody is perfect. It's amazing what links people will go through to justify their sh actions. Leave him alone and head back to the port. I'm on my way there now. It's time to celebrate. We won. I wake up, they say we won. They didn't say what we lost. So to make sure these people don't lose something. There you go. We fight. We don't follow. I like this one. That's two of us. See you in Esperanza. Compromise. Oh, there he is, the real star of the show. I freaking guess so. Who the f are you? And that's an honest response to someone who just applauded a thrown knife. I feel like I should write this down. Humor is always a good way to get out of a bad situation. You want Chorizo to go out and blow up Napoleon and Pequeño? Hey, 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 leave Chorizo out of this. He would make the perfect Trojan horse. Who could say no to petting the little guy? Come on, Chorizo. Save it for dessert, buddy. Come on. Okay, one more win for Chorizo. 
We can't keep reacting to Jose. It's not working. We need to try new things. Be agile. Stay one step ahead of that little hijo de puta. So, do what Napoleon did during the Napoleonic Wars. Now that was pretty fancy. God damn. One swing to cap that gator. And you would rather die than ask for help. And then Danny helps him without Carlos saying a word. Class act. Whoa, master of disguise over here. Shut up and get in the back. Okay. This is why I love that. Because she's already playing into Carlos's papa role. I lied. You know I gotta throw a win in for my two favorite people being cute together. So how you wanna do this? We kill soldiers until we find him. And then? And then we kill more soldiers. Simple. I like it. I was about to say that. Go on it! Yep, they're siblings, all right. If you look closely, you'll see that Carlos tries to throw the bomb, but he wanted to be damn sure he got it away from Alejandro. Well, now you have heard of our great victory in the West. Carlos Montero is dead. His guerrillas on the run. The tobacco fields secure. Say what you want about Castillo. There is still a loving father somewhere deep inside him. I mean, he's not even worried about work right now. He just wants to focus on teaching his boy to shoot. Run. What? Run. <laughs> These little quest intros are a cheap way for Ubisoft to add a bit more personality to the quests as opposed to shooting 56 plus scenes just to intro the mission. And is more interesting than just staring at an NPC. I never knew your papa, but my family worked these lands for 50 years. Wow. Really interesting that she's willing to accept these soldiers into the Monteros, but not forgive her brother. Mistakes sting more when it comes from blood. If only they see her leave to see it. I know. I'm sorry you lost her, Philly. It's just a machine here. Don't be weird. What the f***? Metal bird, hellfire, and the hope of the West only one. So you've flown this? No, never. I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> he doesn't even blink, just so caught up in the moment. No vemo Napoleon el pequeño. That's one hell of a way to go. If Teresa's making deliveries at a party, put a little tip door on him, because no one could say no to tip that little guy. Why are we here? You never even liked Tose. Why? He was an asshole. Why? Dad flips the script on the little game kids love to play. Mi papa love Jesus. He would always say, Jesus would make an amazing Yan and Presidente. Me, Anton. Always remember, Jesus was both the lion and the lamb. Rule with strength, but understand suffering. Your grandmother and I were left to survive alone. She would always remind me of my father's obsession with that verse. She hated it. Why? Because he had it all wrong. Be the lion and the lamb? No, she would say. Right here we get some background on Castillo's backstory and how he became the man he is. From what we're told, it seems like Anton's father genuinely wanted him to become a better man than he could ever be. But after his murder and his grandmother's manipulation, he ended up becoming the man we see in the game. And Anton, unlike his father, is trying his hardest to make sure that Diego becomes exactly like him, if not worse. What says the lamb? Hmm. You want to know why we're here? You are a lion. And we eat the f***ing lambs. Giancarlo knows how to use his voice like I've never heard before. Time for my three favorite words. Trigger the explosives. PTSD for everyone. I feel really bad for laughing at that. This way. F***ing <sighs> dictators. Can't be a super bad guy without a secret bookshelf door. Hmm? It's the entity. Oh, God, that's got to be just as bad as Blade is under the fingernails. Danny handles it like a trooper, though. I had hope for Clara, but I got you. Oh, baby, they finally meet. Viva Libertad. <laughs> this is the first time Castillo jumps at a bullet going off around him. Let Danny go. I am not a monster, Diego. We will give them a chance. Uh. Well, it's not much of a chance, but it's still one. Let 
Also, look at you be saving time on recording lines using they instead of him or her. And Juan, let's leave Clara out of it. We got burn. That's all she needs to know. Mutually assured destruction. And now, Castillo wants to meet. You're joking, right? I want to know what you think. You've been face to face. Oh, she knows. Clara's good. It was to free Yara. For all of us. Juan mentioned Clara's accident is fake, and I swear at this moment she somewhat dropped the accent with for all of us. Like she said, she doesn't care about Castillo, but bringing together his people and theirs, and her dropping that accent to say for all of us is just some grade A direction. And it's also showing the immense amount of trust Clara has in Danny, even after not telling her what happened with the Castillos. And before we continue to the end, can we just appreciate all the work that went into Far Cry 6 story? After Far Cry 5 barely having one, Primal being, well, Primal, and New Dawn being Far Cry 5, but somehow even more stripped down, we'd be forgiven expecting another story not worth hearing, or a story that wasn't even going to be there. But damn did they care this time around. I cared. I actually remember characters this time around. Juan, El Tigre, Clara, Yonron. I only remember one character from Far Cry 5, and that was Jerome. And I only remember him because of the Beijing Canadian, and the name brought me back to my childhood. Far Cry 6 gives us the most fleshed out story and cast of colorful characters that's ever been in a Far Cry game. Story-wise, I think Far Cry 6 is my favorite of all of them. Stop staring. Sit. Danny, sit down. These are the scenes that I live for in video games. Two diametrically opposed foes just sitting down, talking. Diego wasn't playing. Anton's now looking cute. And so, no lies for you. I have acute leukemia. Mm, he's a dick. I was Tater. Years ago. But I'd rather take my shit up front. He will see the vision through. Won't you? Truth or lies? Oh, <laughs> throwing it back in his face. What no! Danny straight up ready to die for Diego. You can't quit. Just like me. Oh, Danny basically just said you by not taking his hand. Like it or not, you are Libertad Jefa. So either walk away right now or lead us to f***ing victory. Oh, hell yeah for Danny. And it 100% works. It's not like some games where at the end they just make you the boss for no reason. This moment was earned through hours and hours of Danny fighting on the front lines with everyone and not giving orders and delegating. We never talked about killing the kid. We never talked about killing the kid. Wow, Nisa's performance still blows me away. Danny is now in charge, and that line goes from anger, distaste, to an upset leader at a member going behind her back. I'm telling you, machetes are Far Cry. What I'm trying to say is, we're going to win. I promise. Shit, <laughs> you're really bad at this. <laughs> there are two types of leaders, the one who talks and the one who acts. And Danny is a leader by action, a much more decisive way to lead. Be the legend tomorrow. You know I love me some center framing. Can you see it? Wait, can you see it? Let's take a look at the plaza again. Something modernist, like Genere. As much as Diego must detest his father, Anton is still Diego's dad. It's still gotta hurt to watch him wither away like this. Anton's blood spilled over the model of his paradise shows that his blood will spill before he ever gets to see his dream Yara. <laughs> And you hear that track that's being played as the revolution was truly getting started back in the boats? It's come back to book in this final push for Yara. Wow, does it make this moment so cathartic. There is one thing in life that will always be true. Do you know what that is? Death. And in Anton's sick brain, he probably believes offering his son the ultimate truth is somehow liberating for Diego. He will protect him. From your friends. From the monsters. You'll be safe. I promise. You know, this was shaping up to be a really heartfelt ending, as there's always been a human deep down inside Castillo. It could have been a beautiful message of the true Yarens learning to accept and be among Yarens. Castillo wanting to save his son from what he went through and trusting Danny, Agaria, to protect Diego. I mean, she almost took a bullet for him. But Far Cry 6 has a different message they want to say about dictators, which I still love. He'll be safe. I promise. Liar. Lies. Diego! No! The message is, the real word isn't cut, clean, and wholesome in the end. 
Sometimes people can't change, and dictators are nothing more than egotistical narcissists. Anton would rather kill himself and his son than face the truth and humiliation that he failed him and his family. Dictators in the end are pathetic cowards that impose their will on others to feel better about their ugly souls. It's, it's okay. It's, it's okay, Danny. You were the lucky one. What a callback to Lita. Danny starts the game holding on to the last words of someone brimming with revolution and ends with someone who's a symbol of tyranny, saying the same thing about her. I guess here's where we find our holes many. Diego rejecting his father and at 13, lying, bleeding out, giving comfort to Danny. When tyranny is law, revolution is order. Where are you going? Yara is yours. Don't fuck it up. Danny is a gorilla at heart. She played her part and now it's time to rest. Ah, uh, but not really rest. We'll find out in just a second. I can hear Ain't No Rest for the Wicked playing my head like it's Borderlands right now. Libertad thanks you for your support. And I come bearing good news. Our Ribeiro supply has tripled. Ah, uh, you know, he's so sad about that Castillo kid. I mean, what his papa did. Wow, that is crazy. Nah, a tragedy. <laughs> well, you know, some people are just sick in the mind, hermano. They're out of control. Same time next week. <laughs> well, you can bet your life on it. They just had to make sure Voss said the word crazy. It's like his second favorite word after insanity. Now, I know they're doing the Be the Villain DLC, but like, is this confirming that all Far Cries take place in the same universe? And does that also mean that Voss actually is alive? I mean, we never saw his dead body, so... It's entirely, entirely possible. possible. I really liked Far Cry. Sure, it's more Far Cry, but if you care to give the game a fair, unbiased shot, I think it's a good step for Far Cry. They made a really great protagonist. Way better than Jason, who honestly didn't set the bar very high. But he's our best reference. And still knocked their villain out of the park. Though he wasn't around much, that in turn elevated every scene he was in. I want a Far Cry 7 that finds the perfect balancing act between hero and villain screen time and have their arc be as well tied as Far Cry 3's. I think they're close and can find it. Ubisoft has put out some stinkers and they've definitely hurt their reputation with the shady game monetization practices and horrible developer conditions in the office. But I'm going to say and hope that it's not too late to turn the ship around for Far Cry and Ubisoft as a whole. Well, that's all I got for you today. Remember, drive the speed limit, drink some water, and love one another. Pizza!